Swansea Water. Is it? Yeah. I thought it was. That's not a Stads one, is it? That's Wilson. Wilson. I don't know. But it was taken at um, the first, there's a somebody I think Biscuit commented on it. There was a picture on one of the sites of the fair in Swansea. Yeah. yeah. There's quite a lot of photos today from uh, from the wreck, wasn't there? Is that? Yeah. What, what's that yeah. on? Is that on? Uh, this on the history day? society. Okay, right, yeah. Because uh, and so I was surprised if that's Swansea is Wilson and son, because uh, in Swansea on the rack it was usually studs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. But I haven't done a close look. I, just I, I do remember they had two horses a couple of years. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Hello. Well, they were dubious, dubious people, so they probably nicked it from some fairground and right. hadn't got round to painting it. Oh, Biscuit, you really... What, what are you trying to say, Biscuit? <laughs> You're trying to say that they were thieves, Biscuit. <laughs> Be careful, now they're still around, Ryan. Yeah, yeah. I, I still got my contacts down in the show, people, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. There was, did you see that photograph... Um, I mean, it, it was a bit too early for us. Um, it was 1955, I think it was. It was threat bands to go in and come and see the Whopper. Yeah, <laughs> not too early for me. <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> I, I got to ask. I got to ask. What was it, Biscuit? Well, well no, nobody knows. You had to pay threat bands to find out. Yeah, I never and paid I, the threat bands. It didn't say what it was, though. No, no, it didn't no. find it. You you don't know what it was. No, no, you'll have to Google it, Con. I, can know I only had nine, nine pence a week for my pocket money then. Yeah. Couldn't afford the threat bands. Must have been a bloody it's big whopper for threat bands. <laughs> yeah. In 1955, yeah. It's sixpence to go into the Odeon Cinema. Yeah. Unless it was one of those, um, plus it was a hall of mirrors and it was your own whopper you were looking at. I remember it, but I don't know what it was. Whopper and wishful thinking. <laughs> yeah. You got the whopper <laughs> mirror and the wishful thinking mirror. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember any of those things at the fair, like the bearded lady or anything like that. No, no. I never had it in Swansea. No. They did if no, you went up that. if you went up to Aberavon. I, I remember I worked up there. I went up with uh, the <laughs> fact that I stayed up there for uh, for about, I think it was four weeks in the summertime. It was surf to Don't tell me you were the bearded lady. <laughs> that was, that was <laughs> yeah. the in the Shit is out <laughs> now. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. Yeah. So, so anyway, after. <laughs> no, they did have a few um, sort of dubious attractions like that. That was in the early years. First year I went. But afterwards, they seem yeah. to disappear. Yeah. You could see them for nothing if you went to Pandora's in the 70s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. you get them all, wouldn't you? Oh, wow. yeah. Did you visit Pandora's much? I never went to Pandora's much. Did you? Oh, Doris no. is great. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I, I think I was the, the only discotheque I ever went to in Swansea was Dora's. It's all the others yeah. I couldn't stand. They were full of um, people, people that were like weird. <laughs> well, I wasn't. I wouldn't say weird, Mike. But uh, yeah. no, they were. They were a bit straightish. You know, really. You had to wear. A, you had to wear a tie and shoes, Colin. That was the thing. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, that was fine. Yeah. I never. I can, never, I can remember <laughs> being taken taken into Dora's with a bunch of the boys that were older than me in the red from the Riddens. And um, I remember I was introduced to Perno for the first time. <laughs> and I was literally carried out over yeah. somebody's shoulder up the yeah. steps to, to get up with that. Nice one. Yeah. If you stood in one place for too long, you were, you were stuck. No, oh, that's right. Yeah. Your feet were stuck to the floor, man. Mm. So, you have some good bands down there as well. Yeah. So were you were you a regular there, Con? Because no, I no, no. I I know I went there. I feel like we probably went there once every three or four months, but that was about it, really. I oh, think I, we went. I think we used to go a bit more than that, but uh, yeah. it was basically you go and see bands. I think it was something like that. 
Or yeah. if we're at a loose end in town, what are we going to do now? Or something like that. Oh, it's good, Dora. Mm. I can remember going, I, I remember seeing Marmalade there. And um, and they only once, the same people. Did, you, did anybody ever go into Jimmy Wiles in mm. Alexander yeah. Road? Yeah. Once. That was, that was an experience. And it, in fact, it was a, there was a post on the same Swansea history site about Jimmy Wiles, and um, and I made some comment about that that it was a place that you I wouldn't have gone back in there again. But uh, I can remember because you used to came you it was under it was underground from what I remember. You went down steps to get into it. Um, and then you went halfway back up the stairs, steps to, to go to the gents. But I can remember having to go in the gents and you were walking in two inches of, well, it was liquid. You only assumed what it was. <laughs> and the following day, you had a white salt lying around your shoes. So yeah. it was fairly obvious what you were walking in. Maybe it was high tide, it was a bit low down, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so one of those toilets you packed your trousers into your sock before you That's went it, in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There was a lot of places like that, wasn't there? Yeah. Where was there? There was a few pubs with toilets outside, wasn't there? There's still, oh, still one now. Is there? We we only um twice I've been in there when we gone to the swans, gone to the commercial. Yeah. Is that still outside? Um, yeah, you, I went I went up there and uh, went went there and you sort of there's a door at the back of the bar and um I walked out so Ah yeah. And I thought, I mean, well where the hell is this way to go back? <laughs> I've been battling for ages, just trying to see if I could see my square. Yeah, we could hear you. Mute, unmute, whatever. I was trying to actually come in and I didn't. Get the bar to ask where the, where the toilets were. Yeah, I was and thinking. I, where's I the was toilet? directed to the toilets then. I thought you were talking about Jimmy Wiles, first of all. <laughs> he was. About going, yeah, going downstairs. <laughs> he was. He was. was he? Yeah, and then he moved to the commercial, I think. All right, so that first yeah, comment about going downstairs, then back up again, you were talking about Jimmy Wiles, were you? Yeah, yeah, All that right. was Jimmy Wiles, yeah. Oh, well interrupted Cambridge then. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Four points. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A picture yeah, of that came up on the um, Swansea history thing. It showed a, huh? a picture of the building opposite being demolished and the railings for the, the toilets downstairs in the middle of the road was there yeah uh, I, I remember the toilets and i remember as i say going into jimmy wiles one probably a saturday afternoon and thinking what the hell am i doing in here and <laughs> make it some, i never went there yeah i made yeah. some derogatory remark about jimmy wiles and some bloke <laughs> bit my bit my head off for uh Insult in the memory of Jimmy Wilder, right? Yeah, I, I think I never ever went there, but I remember it being bandied around and it was it was the go to, particularly used to say on a Saturday afternoon when they must have had license in laws where they were open at lunchtime until uh, maybe uh, was it two o'clock, three o'clock? No, oh, it used to shut, clock at three thirty three thirty you used to shut, didn't that? Yeah, right. Yeah. There we are then. So what, 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 the, what the boys, what the boys used to do, because I, I used to work on a Saturday morning. I was doing my apprenticeship, and then we'd finish work, um, and then go for a pint. And as you say, whether we were in the Riddens Cricketers or Westbourne, they would close at half past three, but the Transport Club. In St Helens Road was open till half past four, so we used to. They, yeah. We go to the transport club then, and we'd have another an extra hour, 
And then we'd only have an hour to kill before the pubs opened again. And uh, I can remember working once on a job and finish on a Saturday morning. Job and finish. Laying some concrete, going straight on the beer after work, covered in concrete. And I ended up as pissed as a newt outside Marion's parents' house at about eight o'clock on a Saturday evening when we were due to go out. There's <laughs> a parrot covered in concrete, stinking dirty, he's still in my working clothes. So the cry came out, seems like a nice boy. <laughs> yeah, 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 it didn't go down very well, I can tell you. Funny you should say something then, it reminds me back a phrase that you don't hear now, but I don't, job and finish. Yeah, it used to be yeah. Now. Was so it pay till five o'clock, but you'd finish it at four, three, so you could leg it. Yeah, yeah. Who's where's yeah. the well, background noise the, coming from? The death carts do it. Do what? The, de the deathsmen do. Bill do job and finish. Yeah. Yeah, Vicky's on the phone. Yeah. All oh, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Why you're still breaking up a bit on my. On this I, I think, have you checked this your um, internet link? How much, how much debit you got, Dave? Because I was having problems like that one before I plugged it into the ethernet. Oh, right. Because so sometimes the Wi-Fi... I don't know, I'll check. Yeah. You're on Wi-Fi there, are you? Yeah. Yeah, well, there's sometimes... Not, it's, I've got, yeah. Sometimes it can slow down a bit. You know, you get periods of weak signals right. and stuff like that, and that makes it uh, mm -hmm. out. <laughs> yeah, you can always put it breaking uh, up, Con. Uh, yeah, yeah, I crack it. I no, cracking up, mate, cracking up. Here comes Kip out. Before I forget, I say something to Sam because he, he made a comment on one of the posts on the Facebook about the tower in the corner of Swansea Castle. Oh, yeah. And I I couldn't see the post again. Um, I don't know the whole history of that, Sam, but I know it was there well before the war and after the war, and I'm pretty sure it was the town council at one point, and it was also, I think, a factory of some description, maybe bottles or something, All right. before it turned into the evening post. So, where, But I think it was made later on, but I'm not sure when. Yeah, because it wasn't like it looked. It wasn't part of the castle because it's. It, it actually it's been gone a long time, wasn't it? Because yeah, the Indian Post yeah. building went years ago. I don't didn't think it, it was right? that. Okay. Yeah, I think it was a, in the what? Exactly. In the sixties, I think. Uh -huh. I, I can remember. I can remember the Evening Post offices there. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I don't really remember the tower, but yeah. I'm assuming. It all came down together, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah most of his tower. No, oh, no. Like, it looks like a folly con. Oh, it, right. Uh, oh, yeah, I got you, yeah. It looks I, like I, it's something from a, a couple hundred years old, the way it, the style of it. Yeah. Okay, I got Maybe you. it was tacked on yeah. to, the, to the castle bit, you know? No, when you said tower, I thought you were talking about the big building behind it, you know? No, no, yeah. no. Oh, I think no. like the old evening post offices yeah. was this tower, you know. Well, where the evening post offices were is this is that big open area now, yeah, yeah. which is like they put benches in it and a bit of a uh, right next to the castle cinema, wasn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I think it was built in the mid mid eighteen hundreds, something oh, like that. It's a folly. It blend in with the castle oh, as a town hall, as it would, you know. So. And that yeah. thing about the comment I made about the three lamps, there was like a gap in the building. So I thought, oh, so wasn't the three lamps always there? But that was when they were rebuilding that bit, was it? And they I, hadn't I, got to. Sorry, I didn't see that bit. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. To the far left of the picture, um, it's looking up um, at Castle Street towards, you know, the, the old Woolworths thing. And on the left hand side of the picture, You've got the building, which is now a um, uh, Jamaican restaurant or something. And then yeah. where the three lamps building is, or the office, whatever period you identify it from, there's a huge, there's just a gap with no building. Yeah. You can see the bottom end of what became 
Um, what was it, uh, David Evans, when that got built there? Am I correct in thinking that where Castle Gardens is, pre-war, that used to be Ben Evans? Was it the yeah, show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Any Castle, I think Castle Gardens took over the footprint of where Ben Evans was. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So any relation between Ben Evans and David Evans? I don't I don't think I, so. I don't I think, think so, no. No, um, I don't think so. No. It's a bit like when you see the pictures of the old Woolworths. And where the old Woolworths was on the corner, well, its original site, where Argos sort of was up in there recently, on that corner, before you go down the hill to the Strand, yeah. the, the little road going down to the Strand was only a lane about yeah. 12 foot wide. So where the original Woolworths was, they knocked that down and Woolworths moved lock, stock and barrel, one building up High Street. Yeah. And that's yeah. where that's where the, that lane, was it Newell Lane or something came from? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. It's called that, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. Interesting. I love the old Woolworths, even the one I remember, which was the one you know, okay. uh, the most recent, but I remember going there with my mum for a special treat. If, you know, if I'd been to the dentist, we'd go there, go to the cafeteria on the first yeah. floor, yeah. have something to eat, and then maybe go to the cinema. Oh, it was such a sort of a day out, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah. Oh, well, something on my mind when I think of it. Uh, what were we to Oh, did you see that poster went round about the macabre cafe? Yeah. yeah. The morgue. Yeah. Well, the picture that went up, it actually was a picture of where the Bamboo Boutique used to be. Yeah. The Bamboo Boutique in Manson Street. Mm. For a while, or up until maybe 10 years ago, somebody was running a bit of a, a sound thing there. It was called the Sound Hall, selling musical instruments, amps and stuff like that. So somebody had got a picture of it and said, oh, look, remember this? The Macabre. This was um, a cafe, very offbeat, um, or late 60s in Swansea, mm. and it was called the Macabre. And the, 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 the coffee tables were shaped like coffin lids. It was really offbeat. Well, it soon be, had, had a nickname of the Morgue, you know? Yeah. And it was very much of a cult place to go. So I put a comment up. I said, by the way, I said, that's not the Macabre. It's just to the right-hand side, you know? <laughs> And they were all coming up with their memories. Oh, yeah, you should sneak in there after school when I was 15. Wasn't allowed to really, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Another old one came up about uh, showing the museum on the right. And it was taken from the oh, early, early 1900s. But dead ahead was the exchange building showing the entrance to what I remember as Pandora's. But it became known then as Dirty Doras. Oh, yeah. yeah. The nightclub. We were talking mm. about doors earlier. Yeah. You missed it, Sam. You missed it. There we are then. Just to recap. Yeah, that was the, the history of that. I remember when they first developed it as a nightclub. Um, I, I, I'd been on the scene about maybe or oh, two years, maybe a bit more. Uh, and it seemed like forever then. I'd been, I'd been DJing for a couple of years. And... A friend of mine had sort of taken on the thing to put some music in there because a guy had, had built it from scratch. He was an electrician and, and he took over the cellar because it was like a gentleman's club. But it was a gentleman's club that was the gentleman were dying off. So there, there's hardly anybody there. So he took on this the cellar building as a venue and it was called Pandora's to start with. And the clientele, it had a really high spec when it was fitted out to start with, like a lot of the nightclubs were starting off to, to be in town. But because of where it was, he was desperate when it opened just to get people in there. So the people, a lot of the people who were coming along there were like Swansea East and people off the, off the boats, you know, seamen just tra traveling in. And they immediately gave it a stamp of being a bit shady. Mm. And he never could quite shake that reputation. And then he more or less went down the line of, ah, well, if you can't get in any other nightclub in Swansea, you can get into, into Pandora's. Yeah. <laughs> and that's where it, right, it got right. its reputation from then, you know. So when yeah. did Pandora's open? 
about 1970, well, I started in 69. I'd more likely been going for a couple of years. So about 72, I think. Mm. Yeah. About 72, yeah. seven, maybe 72, 73. <laughs> So everybody can answer this. Around that time, I know you had sort of um, Barons and the Rank and Pandoras. What else was around? There was, I know there was another one. I can't picture it now. Was it well, the, the Penthouse on Penthouse. Um, uh, the Penthouse. Penthouse on Princess Way, which was above Richard's shops? That was the first real uh, proper nightclub thing in town. There was the Top Rank, which was ballroom style, but the Penthouse, the guy who ran it bit of a you know accountant crook um uh, <laughs> he he modeled it on um tramp in london i think it was no maybe tramp or one of the london clubs quite sort of the thing and it was very much dark and sort of you know but he did a cracking job on it but the mock-up inside was as if you were in an old cellar it was on the first fl floor of a building yeah and the dj console was a mock-up of a, of a front of a rolls royce you know, it was quite the club. I worked there, first of all, in, that's right, 72. I worked there uh, for about a year, 18 months. I went abroad then. And when I came back, I went back and worked there again then in 74, 75, the penthouse. And was, he was, it, was it at, at one point called the Cavalier? No, the Cavalier. Um, oh, yes, hang about. It might have gone into being called the Cavalier, yeah, because it was a penthouse. And then when Bernard George built another emporium, which turned out to be the Valbon. Right. Uh, when he moved over there, somebody else came into that space. That's right, the Cavalier. So it was, oh, so it was Bernard George that had the penthouse, was it? Yeah. Because right. I got in touch with him. He used to run the gambling place um, up on... Um, uh, the Society Club. On, the Society Club up on oh, yeah. Street. Yeah. Street was Society it? Club, yeah. Oh, because right. I think it was Russell Wellington ran the one on Christina Street, <laughs> the first gambling club, right. just yeah. where, that, where that Welsh shop used to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that was, uh, I just think, I'm not sure if it's called the casino, but that was about the same time as the Jimmy Wiles thing. So I think Russell Wellington ran that. Now, I'm not sure if Russell Wellington then moved to, to High Street, but, I, or, but they were, the, the, it was just called the casino, I think, in High Street. Yeah. On the first floor, on the right-hand side as you were going up. That's right, yeah. And so I yeah. remember I heard the word yeah. that he was thinking of a nightclub and I just got in touch and I blagged my way into being the first DJ there, you know? Mm -hmm. But then yeah. Bernard George built the, um, uh, the, the Valbon from scratch, you know, purpose building. Yeah. And he had that away, and then it moved on to um, the likes of Bobby Sullivan and the uh, the Wignalls. Yeah. And, uh, and then Bernard George, I think, you know, he, he got caught off the rails, him <laughs> and a couple of the other top taffias, you know. I must have had a sheltered life because I never went to the Valborn and the Barons and all that kind of stuff. Oh, no, well, dinner, there, was, there were you, like two. You... I didn't work town. I mean, Swansea West was my patch. Right from '69, sort of up until because that was the first time I went to town, which would have been '72. Um, but then there were still the places down in Mumbles. There was enough for everybody to go around, like the Langland Bay itself, the pier, Cinderella's, you know, the, all the bars along by where the Mermaid used to be. Mm. They were kind of bar stroke mm. disco things, so you mm. didn't need to go to town. You know? Yeah. Well, you know, you know, as I said before, the only one I went to really was um, Dora's. Yeah. Well, that was almost the Swansea outpost for, for Swansea West because yeah, it, was, yeah. it, it was more hedonistic, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah. It was more far out, man, which was what was Swansea West was preferred to be. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's like a uh, difference between California <laughs> and uh, Arizona or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, great. <laughs> I think we distinguish for tenant and numbers. <laughs> California. No, 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 Arizona. What's it called? Uh, Utah. Utah or Minnesota. <laughs> you know, the vast barren deserts of the poor tenant. Yeah. <laughs> but here's a little observation of mine. I, I, I couldn't put it all down in a book. I wouldn't have the time, whatever. But when I noticed Wine Street, what happened to Wine Street? Because Wine Street was just empty nobody was there but there was just one or two little outposts 
Um, Barons was kind of popular-ish, but, you know, nothing major in. But when the people who were going to Barons, <coughs> they found somewhere to stop off on the way, you know, on their way up. And it was one place halfway up Wine Street on the right-hand side. It started off as um, a restaurant, Tex-Mex restaurant called Cafe Devro. And oh, it was quite nice, you know, and uh, it was a bit sort of cocktaily and one thing or another. And then um, the owner, he realized that people were coming up Wine Street on their way to Barron's and they were, oh, let's have a drink in here. So he, he changed his style of presentation, uh, mostly became a bar and it took off something awful. It was so busy. Paul Henry used to play there. Paul Henry used to play with the owner uh, who used to play bass years before then, but he couldn't really play that well. But but Paul, in typical Paul manner, Paul said, "Oh, don't matter. I got I got it on the uh, on on the keyboard here." So the two of them used to perform every mm. Friday and Saturday as Rick Rock and Ronnie Roll. Mm. Ask Paul Henry about that period. Yeah. Where was they, that? Played, they played there every Friday and Saturday night, and it was rammed. And it Paul had that style then, really chatty with the customers, telling stories, hitting the fantasy. The whole thing, you know, yeah. I'm Jerry Liu incarnate yeah. and it was really busy, but it was the feeder for Barons. They all went in there up to Barons and then yeah. that's so, where. What was it called, Sam? Well, it, when it opened, first of all, it was called Cafe Devro, D-E-V-R-A-U-X. Oh, wow. yeah. That was that. the guy's yeah. name, Devro, Lyndon Devro. He was from yeah. Porthco. Yeah. And uh, that was at a, at a real moment for a couple of years. And that's where. Um, there was a band called the Gut Bucket Band, who still play around now. And they were really quite a mixture of people. Um, and uh, the guy who runs the Gut Bucket Band now, Dave Painter, he was in this band, which used to play in that Cafe Devro just after, you know, Paul and, and, and the guy played bass, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think everybody else has changed, but Dave Painter has managed to keep the band going after about sort of 25 years, you know. Mm. Maybe more. I remember the name Devro. I remember. I remember that name. For, I don't know why that. I, is. Remember. I can't remember. Uh, Cafe Devro. Mm -hmm. I think mm. it, I don't know what it is now, but I think then it went into a kind of a, a strip club. Um, maybe four or five years there ago. There was a there was a gentleman's club in Wine Street. <laughs> Anything you'd know that? Uh, no, I never, I never actually worked in that one. He knows all the good spots. Jimmy Byers' toilet and Devro's yeah. strip his club. <laughs> <laughs> no, I never actually went in that one, but I do remember, I remember it opening. I don't think it was open for long. No. Yeah. Wasn't yeah. it called the Exotic something or other? Something exotic, I think. Yeah. Something I in thought the back it was just called the Gentleman's Club. I always thought you were a quiet one, Biscuit, yeah. but you were doing a lot of raging in those days, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. Was <laughs> you know, a secret, he's a secret rager. He used to go do his raging yeah. down in town. <laughs> ah, yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, you... yeah, I don't know if he's finished yet. <laughs> Dave, you've been very quiet. Oh, yeah. Well, it's for me to this now. Well, I remember, Con, what was the name of that surfer the other week? The one getting on in years, but he won the uh, some Gary Slater. What Gary was it again? Gary Slater. Kelly Slater. Yeah. Kelly Slater. Yeah, I was talking to somebody today and I was trying to remember the name. Yeah. Not the guy. Top man. Top boat. That, uh, that bloke uh, popped it in Sydney this week. Yeah, Paul Fire. Bought the shark. Yeah. Right. him. Really? Yeah, I heard somebody say that they said they didn't find him. Uh, the first one is, well, they found bits of the blood, but they, they searched first. 